Welcome to the Smarter Balanced Assessment Consortium's High School Mathematics Grade Level Considerations Training Module. This module describes the key differences in the Common Core State Standards for Mathematics between grades 3 through 8 and high school. This module also examines topics that should be considered when developing items and tasks for high school grades. The topics discussed in this module include Use of Appropriate Grade Level and Mathematics Vocabulary an overview of the Smarter Balanced Style Guide, appropriate representation of numbers in items and tasks, grade-appropriate contexts, item difficulty, and the assessment targets that are grade-level specific. Let's begin with grade-appropriate vocabulary. Items must be written so students can understand the items and tasks without difficulty. Vocabulary used must be at or below the grade level being assessed. Appropriate grade level mathematics vocabulary is defined in the Common Core State Standards for Mathematics and the Smarter Balanced Mathematics item specifications. The Smarter Balanced Style Guide provides both global style conventions that apply to all content areas and style conventions that are specific to mathematics. The mathematics style conventions can be found in the Smarter Balanced Style Guide. It is important to review the Smarter Balanced Style Guide before writing items and tasks. Now let's look at the treatment of numbers. Always use numerals for numbers that are used to solve a problem. In the example, numerals should be used for 9 and for 45 because they must be used to solve the problem. Use numerals for numbers that appear in equations. Use numerals for 19 and 35 in the equation example. In addition, the Smarter Balanced Style Guide directs item writers to use words for numbers that appear as the first word in a sentence. Words should also be used for the numbers 0 through 9 with the following exceptions. Use numerals for numbers 10 and above, numbers that precede units of measure, numbers that precede or follow symbols such as the percent sign or dollar sign, dates and years, time of day that appear before a.m. and p.m., and ordered pairs and coordinates. For all grades, there are rules that must be followed when using commas in numbers. Use commas in numbers with five or more digits. Numbers with four digits if the number appears with numbers of five or more digits. And numbers written as words. Do not use commas in numbers with four digits if all numbers with which it appears contain four or less digits. Compound measures. Contexts of items must be appropriate for the age and experiences of high school students. An appropriate context for high school students could include sports played during physical education, school contexts that are universal to all students, school activities such as class trips, going to the library, music class, and playing games in physical education class are all universal activities. Activities that involve nominal exchange of money, such as buying tickets for a movie, buying fruit or other types of snacks, or purchasing drinks. Some examples of inappropriate contexts for high school include skiing, since it is an expensive sport and has geographic bias, swimming pools and backyards due to socioeconomic biases, paying a mortgage or using retirement funds, since these activities have not been experienced yet by high school students. A range of difficulty is necessary to discriminate between low and high performing students. Items and tasks should form a continuum from easy, those that most students could be expected to answer, to hard, those that only a few students could be expected to answer, with most items falling in the middle range of difficulty. An adaptive test requires items that span a full range of difficulty. Item writers need to include items that they perceive as easy, medium, and hard. To help guide the development of items that range in difficulty, each sample item presented in the item specifications provides information about its anticipated difficulty level. Now, let's examine the claims and assessment targets contained in the Smarter Balanced Assessment Consortium Mathematics Content Specifications. Unlike the kindergarten through grade 8 Common Core State Standards for Mathematics, the high school standards are not grade level specific. The high school standards represent what students must know and be able to do upon graduation from high school. The Common Core State Standards specify the mathematics that students should study during high school to reach the goal of being college and career ready upon graduation. 
The high school common core state standards for mathematics are organized into conceptual categories rather than domains, as is the case with kindergarten through grade 8. The conceptual categories portray a coherent view of high school mathematics. A student's work in one conceptual category crosses a number of traditional course boundaries. Now, let's explore each conceptual category. The first conceptual category is number and quantity. As students progress from kindergarten through grade 8, they repeatedly extend their understanding of numbers, from whole numbers in early elementary school through real numbers in middle school. In high school, students will extend their understanding of quantity by modeling with a wider variety of units. Students will also encounter situations where they must decide how to best conceive and present the quantity to answer the problem. The second conceptual category is algebra. Students will build on their work with algebraic expressions, equations, and inequalities in middle school to analyze and explain the process of solving an equation. As a result, students will be able to apply these techniques to solve equations and manipulate formulas of increasing complexity. Students will also come to understand that with the introduction of the imaginary numbers, some equations that previously had no solution now have a solution. The third conceptual category is functions. In grade 8, students define, evaluate, and compare functions and use them to model relationships between quantities. In high school, students learn function notation and develop the concepts of domain and range. Students will use functions or multiple functions to model real-world situations. They will then use algebraic techniques, examinations of the function using tables and graphs, and technology to interpret the function and relate it back to the real-world situation. Students will also come to understand important properties of certain families of functions, such as linear and quadratic functions. The next conceptual category is modeling. According to the Common Core State Standards for Mathematics, Modeling is the process of choosing and using appropriate mathematics and statistics to analyze empirical situations, to understand them better, and to improve decisions. Modeling is best interpreted not as a collection of isolated topics, but rather in relation to other standards. Making mathematical models is a standard for mathematical practice for grades K through 12. Specific modeling standards appear throughout the high school standards and are indicated by a star symbol in the Common Core State Standards. The fifth conceptual category is geometry. High school mathematics, for the most part, is devoted to the study of Euclidean geometry. During high school, students will extend previous geometric understandings from middle school through the use of increasingly precise definitions and through the process of developing formal proofs. Students will study the concepts of congruence, similarity, and symmetry, as well as the geometry of right triangles and circles. The final conceptual category is statistics and probability. Statistics and probability is the study of how to use data to make decisions and predictions. Through careful study of how data is gathered, displayed, and examined, students can learn to make reasonable and accurate decisions using data. In high school, students will extend previous understandings of how to gather, display, and examine data for the purpose of making decisions. In particular, students will learn about the importance of randomization when gathering data. The high school common core state standards for mathematics include additional mathematics that students should learn prior to taking advanced courses, such as calculus or statistics. These standards are designated with a plus symbol. Appendix A of the Common Core State Standards for Mathematics may provide additional background information for item and task writers. The focus of Appendix A is on organizing the standards for mathematical content into model pathways to college and career readiness. With this understanding of the structure of the standards for high school, let's shift our focus to the claims and assessment targets that will guide the development of items and tasks for high school. Smarter Balanced has defined four claims for mathematics. Claim 1 focuses on concepts and procedures. Claim 1 requires students to explain and apply mathematical concepts and interpret and carry out mathematical procedures with precision and fluency. The focus is on content knowledge learned at the high school level. A variety of item types are used to collect evidence for Claim 1, including selected response, constructed response, and technology-enhanced items and tasks that focus on a particular skill or concept. 
Content for this claim may be also evaluated at a deeper level with extended response items and performance tasks. Items and tasks have a direct connection to and emphasis on the conceptual categories defined in the Common Core State Standards for Mathematics. Let's look at the assessment targets associated with each conceptual category. Three assessment targets have been defined for number and quantity. The first target builds on students' understanding of exponents and requires them to extend their properties to rational numbers by rewriting expressions using radicals and rational exponents. The second target requires students to use properties of rational and irrational numbers. For this target, students are expected to make generalizations about the sums and products of rational and irrational numbers and to provide examples that range from concrete to abstract generalizations. The third target focuses on the ability to reason quantitatively and to use units to solve problems. Tasks for this target require students to choose and interpret units in formulas and the scale in a graph. Seven assessment targets have been defined for algebra. The first target focuses on interpreting the structure of expressions and requires students to recognize equivalent forms of an expression as determined by the expression's structure. The second target focuses on writing expressions in equivalent forms to solve problems and requires students to choose or produce an equivalent form of an expression, including factoring a quadratic expression, completing the square, and using properties of exponents. The third target focuses on performing arithmetic operations on polynomials and requires students to add, subtract, and multiply polynomials. The fourth target focuses on creating equations that describe numbers or relationships and requires students to create equations and inequalities in one variable to solve problems, or to create and graph equations in two variables to represent relationships between quantities. The fifth target focuses on solving equations as a process of reasoning and explaining one's reasoning. This target requires students to solve radical and rational equations in one variable. The sixth target focuses on solving equations and inequalities in one variable and requires students to solve linear equations and inequalities as well as quadratic equations in one variable. The seventh and final target focuses on representing and solving equations and inequalities graphically. This target requires students to interpret a line or curve as a solution set of an equation in two variables. Four assessment targets have been defined for functions. The first target focuses on understanding the concept of a function and the use of function notation. This target requires students to distinguish between relationships that represent functions and those that do not, including recognizing a sequence as a function. The second target focuses on interpreting functions that arise in applications in terms of a context and require students to sketch graphs based on given key features and interpret key features of graphs with emphasis on interpreting the average rate of change over a specified interval. The third target focuses on analyzing functions using different representations. This target requires students to graph functions by hand or using technology and to compare properties of two functions represented in different ways. The fourth and final target focuses on building a function that models a relationship between two quantities and requires students to write a function to describe a relationship between two quantities. For geometry, one assessment target has been defined. This target focuses on proving geometric theorems and requires students to explain proofs or reasoning related to theorems about lines, triangles, circles, or parallelograms, including algebraic proofs or geometric theorems. For statistics and probability, one assessment target has been defined. This target focuses on summarizing, representing, and interpreting data on a single count or measurement variable, this target requires students to use appropriate statistics to explain differences in shape, center, and spread of two or more different data sets, including the effects of outliers. Claim 2 focuses on problem solving and requires students to solve a range of complex, well-posed problems in pure and applied mathematics, making productive use of knowledge and problem-solving strategies. 
Evidence for Claim 2 is elicited through selected response, constructed response, extended response, and technology-enhanced items and tasks that focus on problem-solving. Claim 2 items and tasks should require students to construct their own pathway to the solution. Some relevant verbs that identify content clusters and or standards for Claim 2 include understand, solve, apply, describe, illustrate, interpret, and analyze. Claim 3 focuses on communicating reasoning and requires students to clearly and precisely construct viable arguments to support their own reasoning and to critique the reasoning of others. Evidence for Claim 3 is elicited through constructed response, extended response, and technology-enhanced items and tasks that focus on mathematical reasoning. Relevant verbs that identify content clusters and or standards for Claim 3 include understand, explain, justify, prove, derive, assess, illustrate, and analyze. Claim 4 focuses on modeling and data analysis and requires students to analyze complex real-world scenarios and construct and use mathematical models to interpret and solve problems. Evidence for Claim 4 is elicited through performance tasks and collections of extended response items that focus on modeling and data analysis. Claim 4 tasks are real-world problems that are complex and may contain insufficient or superfluous data. Tasks generating evidence for Claim 4 in a given grade will draw upon knowledge and skills articulated in the progression of standards up to that grade, with strong emphasis on the major work of the grade. Relevant verbs that identify content clusters and or standards for Claim 4 include model, construct, compare, investigate, build, interpret, estimate, analyze, summarize, represent, solve, evaluate, extend, and apply. Claims 2, 3, and 4 are aligned to the mathematical practices from the Common Core State Standards for Mathematics and are identical across grade levels. For this reason, the assessment targets for Claims 2, 3, and 4 are not divided into a grade-by-grade -grade description. Rather, a general set of assessment targets is provided, which can be used as guidance for the development of item and task specifications for each grade. The assessment targets for Claims 2, 3, and 4 were presented in the Content and Item Specifications module and can be found in the Content Specifications document. This module introduced topics that should be considered when writing and reviewing items and tasks for high school, such as vocabulary, style, context, and item difficulty. This module also described key structural differences in the Common Core State Standards for Mathematics between grades 3 through 8 and high school. The Common Core State Standards contain one set of standards for high school that is organized into conceptual categories rather than domains. Finally, the module introduced the claims and the assessment targets for Claim 1 for high school students that are found in the Smarter Balanced Mathematics Content Specifications.